Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to a special edition of the Local Cafe uh, called Hack and App. Uh, I'm Alex, and I'll be your host for tonight. Uh, Bogdan is here with us, but he'll also be in the jury tonight. So uh, he left it on to me and Reza to, uh, to uh, do the talking in this event and uh, guide you through it. Uh, so, as you, uh, as you all may know, we have a very special edition, a hackathon. It's uh, called Hack and App. And um, uh, just for all the, all the new people that came into the local cafe and don't know exactly what to expect, we generally host this webinar uh, every Wednesday. It's a, it's a team webinar. Uh, and uh, in a normal webinar, we talk about uh, um, product updates. We do some hands-on low coding. We build some apps together. Uh, and you can find all the previous recordings of all our previous webinars on our YouTube channel. Uh, I think they will, uh, will help uh, with a link in the, in the description and the Zoom chat. But going back to today, today is a very special edition. It's called Hack and App, and uh, it's a local hackathon. How we, uh, what we'll be doing today is that uh, our teams, some of our teams uh, have been challenged to build a help desk system. Uh, or to progress as much as possible in it. They have had half, half a day to build it and uh, have had a day in advance to research the platform that they'll be building on. Their challenge was to use a popular local platform out there other than Plant and App. So there are Plant and App people that won't be using Plant and App. And uh, they've already built their, uh, their applications and they're ready to present right now in the local cafe. Uh, the purpose is, uh, is to have a head-to-head -head evaluation, an objective evaluation on some of the most popular local platforms out there, to validate the speed and the power of low code working under pressure, and also to have some very serious fun. The participants today, uh, five teams using five different platforms. You'll see the platforms as we go into the webinar. Uh, the teams are made up by uh, local engineers and colleagues from the Plant and App team, and they will have about five minutes for each team to present. Uh, there will be a two-minute Q&A session with uh, the judges, but uh, if there are any questions uh, you specifically like to ask, throw them in the chat window, and if we have time, we'll answer them. This will be a very uh, blitz event today, uh, but if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat window. Uh, we also have a jury that will be uh, voting on, uh, on uh, the apps that are getting built. Uh, we have uh, Chris Gitiano, uh, which is a venture partner at Founders Factory, Emil Muto, which is CEO at Neuroni Studios, Martin Medvedsky, an investment director at Flashpoint Capital, and of course Bogdan, founder and CEO of Plant and App. Uh, there will be prizes, there will be uh, some honorary uh, gift vouchers for, uh, for the teams. Uh, and uh, of course, the teams will also get uh, the hackathon t-shirts, but uh, everyone is involved. Uh, there will, only, will also be uh, a grand prize awarded by the jury, but also people's choice. So uh, if you have any favorite presentations uh, on what they've built, how they're presenting, uh, you will have the chance to vote. Uh, and we will be uh, using the judging app we presented in the last edition of the local cafe. Uh, this will be uh, the structure for today. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, we had the intro, we'll be looking at the judging app. We'll have about 40 minutes for the presentations and then we'll get to, uh, uh, to have some uh, warm feedback from, from the judges and finally announce the winners. Uh, and I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, uh, our head of product, uh, Reza, to show us a bit around the judging app and uh, what will happen exactly in uh, terms of the backend uh, and what you can do as participants to, uh, to vote. And also tell us a bit about the criteria for today. Sure, thanks, Alex. Um... Can you um, turn over the share to me? Thank you. Sure. Okay, so hello folks. If you remember uh, last week, uh, I showed the starts 
of this hackathon app. It's come a little ways since then. Um, it was probably the most uh, complex thing I've personally built with uh, Plant an App and um, tested my, my abilities quite a bit and um, showed me some opportunities we have uh, to strengthen up when you get in deep with a system. But nevertheless, it's built and uh, it's working good. Uh, so uh, one of the things I wanna invite you all to do today is if, uh, and I'll pay, post, paste this in the chat, but you can uh, register and you should be able to explore the app. Um, go find the chat here. There we go. So it's it's hack dash an app dot apps dot plant an app dot com. Uh, so it's, it's basically Hack an App is the name of this system. And uh, you'll sign up as a uh, like audience. So participants are the people in the hackathon, judges are the people judging the hackathon. But then if you are um, viewing and, and maybe voting and picking a favorite, exploring the solutions, the, the different offerings, that's, that's the role you'll pick uh, once you go to the app, it'll ask you to log in. There's a register button. Just click that button and it'll let you sign up and pick the role that you want. You'll get an email with a link. You click it, set your password and you're in. Um, so you'll have a plenty of time to do that here in a second if you like. Uh, and once you do, the first thing you'll kind of see, and uh, the system was built in a way that it supports multiple challenges. The low code bake off, the first one's the one we're doing today. You can kind of see some details about it. The best thing to do is just go ahead and click on its name. And this is really where all the action happens and will be taking place. And so you'll get to see what the challenge was today and read a little bit about it, what the requirements kind of were. Um, the judging criteria, there's six things that the teams are being judged against. Um, value, innovation, complexity, functionality, their overall pitch and their intuitiveness. Um, We've got some prizes we want to give the teams um, and then you can click on the teams and see who the teams are and read a little bit about them um, and what they've built. You can click and see what the solution as far as uh, which platform they chose to build in. Now, if you're a judge, you'll go to teams and as a team is presenting, you'll just uh, click on judge team. And so you'll see a little bit about the team. Now, I'm not a judge, so nothing's coming up. But uh, when one of the judges clicks on this, it will show them for that team the six different criteria. Um, and they'll just uh, click the little judge button there. It'll pop. It's very intuitive. Pop up a form. I can also sign in as one of the judges and show it. But uh, there's a little star rating system, one to five rating, uh, five being the best you can get, one being the there was an attempt. Um, and so once they judge, uh, and we can all kind of keep uh, a look out at the challenge results. And so as the judging is taking place and the scoring is happening, uh, we'll see the scores increase. Um, after uh, folks have presented from the team screen, uh, you, you, once all the judging's done, and the presentations have happened, you guys will have a chance to vote. And uh, just from the list uh, here of teams, just like the judges have a judge team, you'll have a, a, you know, pick your favorite team, little heart icon, and you'll vote on which one was your favorite team. Uh, and those votes go in and uh, kind of factor into the overall score as well, especially if there's a tie, there'll be a tiebreaker, but we can kind of watch the scoring as it happens and the results come in and the rankings. Uh, so that'll be from this challenge results. And that's, that's pretty much it. There's six criteria, five teams, a total of 120 different factors that will be scored against all the teams when it's all said and done. Uh, and then there'll be five results here and we'll see who wins today. And the winner gets a $50 uh, 
Amazon equivalent gift card uh, and the People's Choice team uh, gets a $25 gift card. So kind of uh, without further ado, um, Alex, did you have a team that you wanted to start off with? Yeah, uh, before that, maybe let's just make sure that uh, people can access the site. Uh, I tried to log in. He said my email was taking, so I just used forgot password. Uh, yeah, you shouldn't have registered. So did you get in? Uh, I get, got in using forgot password. So that's for judges. That's what we have to do or? Uh, it, for the, for you were set up uh, prior, the other judges should have gotten an email uh, pretty much around the start of the webinar um, with their account. Mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Uh, and then uh, some people in the chat don't see the people's award, I think, uh, page. Okay. So give me a moment and I will take a look at that. Um, main thing is, uh, Martin, are you able to see the judging page yet? So when you click on judge team, you should be able to, let me double check that you are set up in here as a judge. You are. And Jen, I will take care of that. I'm sure it's just a minor permission. Let me give Alex the hosting back. And if he wants to pull up a slide, I will take a look at these couple little hiccups. It wouldn't be a hackathon if there wasn't something blowing up in your face. In the meantime, we'll get ready for uh, for our first team, and uh, I'll announce it right away. And uh, Reza, if you can uh, continue in the chat with uh, the rest of the people while uh, while we're presenting them to solve the the judging. Certainly. Uh, if you can uh, pass the to me. Yep. Let me know when uh, when you got it in the participants panel. It seems like people are getting it now. Mm -hmm. I didn't touch anything, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe just needed a refresh or something. Um, cool. I see people are uh, are getting in right now. Reza, uh, can you just pass the Zoom host back to me so I can promote the uh, first team to panelists? Okay, so uh, our first team, uh, they, uh, above everything else, they have a very interesting uh, name and you'll get to see it right away. Uh, it's the local ca cafe as usual, uh, Mr. Rado and uh, uh, together with uh, Together with Adi and Mihai uh, from the product team, and as soon as I can uh, can promote them to uh, uh, to panelists, you also get to see the reveal on their team name and what uh, platform they got to use. I am I am not seeing that option, Alex. Help me out here, man. Um, go to the participants panel, uh, and you yeah, should I, see panelists. Yep. All right. Oh, yeah. Good, great, thank you. Uh, so, Rado promoted to panelists. Hi, Rado. He should hear us in a minute. Nihai and Adi. Hello. So, uh, just Hello. before uh, just before passing uh, passing it down to you, uh, the the first team. Alcohol Force One or Beer Force One, and they have been using App Sheet. And guys, this is your T-shirt. You'll get it. Uh, you'll get it if you deserve it, and I'm sure you will. So, uh, ready? Yes. Okay. I'll stop my sharing. You start your sharing. Yes. 
Guys, you have five minutes. Go, go, go. Okay. All right. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, me and my colleagues developed a ticketing app um, using AppSheet. Um, we encountered during the development some interesting things, some restrictions and um, some issues that we couldn't, you know, get over. Um, it was a little bit challenging. Um, we had to change a little bit the mindset coming from, from Plant and App, we had to change the mindset a little to, to understand that we are behind the scenes working basically only with Excel, Excel files. Um, but um, during our around six hours of development, I think after three hours, we started to kind of understand and get a grasp of what, what we needed to do. Um, I think um, initially uh, we got a little bit confused on the user's part uh, because AppSheet doesn't really provide you a, a you know, a user management or user membership, probably as at least I'm as I'm used, uh, they provide you to, uh, an option to get any to choose any authentication provider that uh, you see in this drop, uh, drop down right here. But after that, um, uh, you in a in a ticketing system, for example, you'll have to manage uh, manually based on you on the email who's an uh, who's a ticket uh, who's an agent into the system. Uh, after that, uh, figuring out how to, you know, log in and uh, figuring out that we don't really have roles, uh, we need to build our own roles. We started uh, creating the data model, or in this case, creating the proper sheets. Uh, a pretty surprise was uh, the fact that uh, naming the columns in a specific way automatically linked the database model for us, which was a, a nice surprise to have. And after that, we kind of get got stuck in the in the UX part, where uh, not uh, after that six hours of working, I'm not really sure we did uh, the proper things how it should have been done. Uh, a very simple uh, interface. Um, they, from what they have, they, so let me put it, they have a way to access the app uh, online from the browser also. But I, from what I see, they, the focus of them is on the mobile. So they provide us with a, a, a mobile application, let's say a hybrid from what, uh, from what I saw, where you can start creating a very simple and uh, a new ticket. Uh, add the content and uh, we couldn't figure out how to specify automatically the status to new when you are doing that. And what you are seeing right now is a view from my colleague Adi, which is a, a, a normal user into the application and the tickets uh, he had opened into the application. Uh, his, uh, this, those are the issues and here below we have the, the comments. Now, uh, a pretty interesting tool of impersonating a, a user we can find here at the bottom. Uh, all right, and I can apply. Uh, I can apply to Privita app as a agent. Uh, and uh, now, being an agent, uh, I will see that uh, the list that I'm seeing here at the bottom that are the tickets assigned to me. But I can also see tickets that are not assigned to any agent at at the moment. I can click on uh, ones that are new. A new and I have the option to start the workflow to assign the ticket to me basically change as put me as the uh, manager of this ticket by clicking this now uh, if I click back I will see that I have the ticket in the new status assigned to me and I can go here and add a, add a new reply can you give us more details oops oops all right and I can click save uh, an interesting thing, and I'm not really sure, but assuming that we are working with behind the scenes, we are working with Excel, she's the app is not really updating uh, immediately. Uh, you see the status is still in new. Uh, a synchronization option appears here. I think uh, there's some, some caching options and I'm not really sure why. Maybe it doesn't happen. See, waiting for, uh, I think, oh, I think I, sorry. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. All right. Uh, then, yeah, uh, not really customizable from this standpoint. Uh, something that we find really easy to happen was uh, that we could have, we'd, we'd build a, um, a dashboard really quickly to see uh, if someone wants to see, you know, how many tickets in what status is. Everything is right here. Uh, in other words, uh, an easy application for uh, easy uh, apps, for simple apps. Uh, if you want to move from, you know, 
only spreadsheets to a mobile, simple mobile application. I think AppSheet will do the trick. Amazing. Time's up. Perfect. Finished right on time. Cool. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, any questions from the judges? Hi. Uh, quick question. Have you tried personalizing uh, the look and feel or you've just uh, applied the default templates? Uh, yes, we adapt adapted a little bit the colors. So we, we, we have uh, an option to change from a light theme to a dark theme, um, change the uh, primary color and the logo here and the launch image. Uh, basic things just to uh, to give you know just basically change the colors here and there, but not uh, not really other options in that. Uh, so you don't, you do not have control over CSS or, or anything. Uh, like that. I no 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 no. It's, uh, I'm not sure if they use CSS because this is going to transform in the mobile app as well. But if the, mm -hmm. if it's a hybrid application, basically uh, an iframe in a mobile application, still no access to any CSS or anything like that. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. And we have to move on to the next team. Thank you and congrats, Alcohol Force One. The next team, some Romanians might recognize it, uh, Robbie Babo. And we have Andre, Andre, and Mihail showcasing one of the most popular no code platforms out there, Bubble. Guys, whenever you're ready, take it away. Hello. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Michael, uh, and uh, let me share my screen really quickly. Uh, here. So, uh, as Alex said, uh, we tried using Bubble, um, which uh, we thought at first uh, th uh, so uh, that um, it's uh, a little simple, but uh, we found out that it's a bit more complicated than uh, we thought. Uh, basically, you can draw and uh, every button, every uh, grid, let's say, uh, like uh, you can see here, uh, here is a grid which is uh, more complex than our grid. Uh, and you can draw anything like from buttons to uh, the final thing. Uh, and uh, for a button to work, uh, you need to use a workflow and uh, that's uh, kind of simple. So you just uh, put every action in line and they will run like that. Uh, it seems simple, but it's uh, it has uh, some uh, blocking, if I can say like that. Uh, if our team, so basically Andrew, both Andrew were working, and if I wanted to test it, uh, both of them uh, needed to stop uh, and let me test everything uh, here. So here is the app. Uh, I'm logged in with uh, Andrew's account, and as you can see, he has an a, a ticket so if I wanted to test it and other ones uh, uh, will try to edit something uh, it will block me so that's a bit uh, frustrating uh, and you can create a ticket uh, we created some pages let's say testing to uh, some description and uh, everything is working normally and now with this account I I have uh, two tickets uh, and uh, some other things that we encountered was uh, we didn't find uh, uh, how to connect like uh, roles with users. As you can see here, uh, Andrew's account has uh, the roles uh, software specialist, support manager and, and user, but uh, it's not connected with the database roles. Uh, we could uh, insert uh, in the users like uh, let's say id1 id2 id3 but when we tried to show it here uh, we couldn't have made the connection like i don't know because uh, they don't have any run sql query like we have and you can't make queries you are working uh, with uh, the entity properly like you said uh, you don't say select from user uh, you click and select the user table. And uh, 
yeah, from our perspective, uh, we are a little bit more uh, complex, let's say like that, but uh, I think we can do a little bit faster some things. Yeah, yeah, they are more wide on the look and feel part than uh, than on the code part. So the... yeah, you don't need to know any coding or something. Yeah, so this 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 platform is more uh, than a no code platform than than low code. Yeah. Hey, guys, we also have some of the sub slides, right? With top three best features. You found? Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I can mm -hmm. show this, but uh, it's a little bit more simple for me. Mm -hmm. uh, some things there were awesome. The drag and drop and the drawing, like I said, uh, they had a lot of plugins like Facebook, Google, uh, uh, Angular Grid, uh, and you can insert here everything. Uh, but uh, the downside were, like I mentioned, the user roles, the testing part. You have 20 seconds left, make them count. Well, uh, from my perspective, this is all that I prepared. And uh, compared with uh, Radu's application and the other team is not so uh, cool, but uh, it's hard work here. It looks better. <laughs> Yeah, it uh, looks like pop. Cool. Good job, guys. Time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, quick questions from the jury? Hi, guys. This is uh, Chris. Chris here. I do have a quick one. If you uh, could pick one thing that you learned from uh, Bubble, uh, the only, the one single, uh, single most important thing you learned that you would want maybe to explore further in Plant and Up. What, what would that be? Mm. Well, maybe the drag and drop actions. Yeah, the drawing was uh, fun because you uh, draw exactly the um, dimension that you want for the bottom. So yeah, that's a cool feature. The grid thing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Guys. Thank you too. Well, guys, thank you very much. We're moving on to our next team. Uh, this is the complete name, the three of us and an umbrella. And uh, let's give the stage to Kostin, Christy and Manu. Hello there. <clears throat> Uh, and I encourage you to also uh, showcase your slides. The, those are valuable insights that I think everyone would like to, to find out from you. Uh, sorry, what uh, slides exactly? I mean, uh, uh, I don't know if they prepared them. The, the top three free feature slides, if you, uh, if you have them. I know that everyone has them ready. Uh, uh. Whatever works for you, uh, but if you can uh, tell us the top three features you found out and the top three features you uh, felt were missing from the platform, then that would have helped. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not quite familiar with uh, this. Let me start uh, mm -hmm. share, sharing screen first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you see the screen with the retool? Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, quick check. I had the slides somewhere here. Uh, yeah, we do have some. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh... If you want, I can take over so, the slides, Kostin, and you can come back to the app. Uh, no. Okay, let's start uh, with the, uh, like you said, with the slides. There were something here, features that were awesome. So, uh, these were extracted obviously from the app. Uh, so you can understand all of these, uh, the features. We'll have to go through the app and you'll see exactly. Uh, starting with the first page, when you create a new app on a new account on Retool, you are presented with this page. 
and you start creating apps in them. They, their apps are basically pages. Um, once you start creating a new app, uh, you, you are defined uh, with, uh, you are presented with an editor where you can insert tables, buttons, text inputs, drop downs, and there have all sorts of inputs you can use. You can even have models, so the UI is pretty extensive and it's pretty nice. Uh, their flow, their workflow behind the scenes, it's based on queries. Their queries are made against some resources you create in the settings. The resources can be SQL databases, REST APIs, and different things uh, like parent window, JavaScript uh, functions, and all of that. But basically, all we are programming here is based on JavaScript and SQL, most of the part. Uh, here you can see we have defined a um, grid with uh, tickets. Here we have special queries we used to retrieve the data and display the data. Um, a nice to have feature for the retool would be to have a um, data model uh, kind of manipulation. I mean, uh, you don't have any sort of managing your database from the app in a visual mode. You have to create your resource with a custom SQL database and interact it only through SQL queries. Um, you can define them in the resources part. And yeah, uh, edit resource. And you can create, they integrate with different uh, kind of uh, uh, SQL servers, like Postgres, SQL Server, and Oracle, and so on. Uh, the login to, to the app, since this was a requirement, is made actually with uh, Retool. So you don't have create a single app. You are, your whole application is part of the Retool. You are a tenant of Retool. So users are actually accounts on Retool, which you are given, which you give them permissions on your application, whole application. Uh, they make it easy to enable two-factor authentication using the, an authenticator. Uh, you can automatically specify which domain can automatically join. So the users, they just create an account on Retool and they instantly have access to your application. Um, you can customize it with a new team, like you can create uh, some, you can specify the colors for accents, for primary colors and things like that, simple things. The plans are the free ones is the most limited. When you create a new account, either shown with the pro one, you are the, using the pro one, which supports multiple things, but our trial ends in six days, so probably will be automatically moved to free plan. The permissions, uh, Ritual supports permissions. They give you admin, editor, and viewer, and all users. We created the user support specialist and support manager roles, and you can assign users in their role. In each and their role. Later, you can find uh, a user role. Uh, let me see. So, yeah, the later you can use the. You can see the roles. Here, in the left part, as you can see, you can uh, you find what roles the user current user has. A nice feature to have in Plant an App will, would be this uh, uh, panel with the available tokens, let's say, where you can quickly identify what you are available to use in in your queries. And as you can see, the queries are created using JavaScript and return true or false or whatever you want. It's Just pretty... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the application itself is working <laughs> in those 10 <laughs> seconds. You can create a new ticket and you're specified and you're automatically redirected or no, to the ticket. Let's see the screen and... Okay. If the judges have any questions, please feel free to, to ask them. Uh, new show.
let me stop the screen. Based on what you found there, is the pricing based on uh, development accounts or user accounts? Um, I think on the free plan for which you are paying you nothing, they give you, actually on the free plan, they give you edit mode only for all the users. So you, are, you can actually develop the application on the free plan, I think, but you are limited to some um, things like staging and product resources. They support the uh, uh, versioning with staging and pro uh, production and, and switch between them. You are limited on the free plan. You don't have uh, some SQL Server integrations and you don't have granular access controls on the security part. But I think you can develop most of the application using the free plan, which is basically free. After that, when you are ready to go live, you can move on with the next plans. And the user plan, and the plan seems to be per user per month. Kostin, thank you very much. Thanks for the presentation, the, the awesome work. Thank you. We're moving on to the next team, uh, which is Devs One, where we have Robert and Gabriel, and they'll be showcasing Mendix. Guys, take it away. Yeah, thank you. Let me share my screen. Timer so, stop. Yeah, so I think you will notice uh, a pattern here. Um, as the platforms grow in complexity, they are harder and harder to use. And unfortunately, you'll see that for us, uh, I think it was like four hours or so to figure out how to customize the uh, login screen and the registration screen, which was a requirement in the initial uh, development of the, of the site. We needed to have custom registration for our users so that we can assign them in different roles and things like that. Uh, as I said, we worked with Mendix and I think is the most uh, involved you have to install this uh, app called Mendix Studio Pro, uh, which looks a bit like a shell of Visual Studio or something like that. It's a bit modern, a bit old, I don't know, depending on how you look at it. Um, they have something called projects and the project is, is basically an app. Um, they have uh, the project is structured into modules. You have this project uh, level here, which has the project level settings. Let's say you can set up the security of the app by default. Uh, I think it starts with security level off. So you don't have user accounts and things like that. And you can move on into different things. Unfortunately, by default, the, the login system is tied to Mendix. So your end users uh, need to have a Mendix account to log in into your um, application, which doesn't feel right for me at least. And we try to pull out from that and uh, do our own thing. And that uh, proved to be quite difficult. Um, so yeah, unfortunately the application doesn't work right now because we are, uh, we were in the process of finishing the registration uh, page. Um, so moving in, uh, one interesting thing is that everything is, is tied together mm -hmm. in, in the app. So you have references for everything for entity entities and for workflows, which they call microflows. Um, so here is the domain uh, model, for example, it's sort of a database diagram sort of thing. Um, so yeah, this is the, this is the system uh, wide uh, domain model, uh, which cannot be edited uh, or anything. You have the user information and a few uh, details about that. Um, and then they have an app store and all app store modules that install are here and you can change a few things uh, between them. 
you see all their pages and all their their flows and things like that. This is a nice editor for the for the workflows. Um, and I'm not sure what else I can show you. I mean, I can uh, show the features that we liked. Uh, and as I said, the entities and the um, workflows are first class citizen and they're easy to reference throughout the entire application. And when you want, you can uh, go to an entity and click a button and they show wherever you, you use that uh, entity. And that's nice. Uh, another thing, they have uh, an app consistency check. Unfortunately, I'm not sure I can show it uh, here. Um, yeah, so it's something like this. They show uh, if you didn't configure something well in, in the application, they show some errors and you can't move on and you can publish the application until you fix them. That's something that would be cool for plant and app as well. Uh, so those checks are for the relations between all the entities and how they are set up in the pages and things like that. Uh, and another thing would be that they have keyboard shortcuts. Um, and it's very intuitive to do and un uh, undo, uh, redo and do undo some of the changes or most of the changes that you do in, in this editor here. So yeah, and features. Uh, that we wish to have, to, to have, yeah. Um, Thanks, up, Robert, but uh, yeah. just mention the features and we're okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, an ability to, to view the, the data that you inserted in the entity. There is no way for a developer to just query the, the data from what I was able to figure out. Uh, and as I said, the login and registration process is a bit, uh, uh, hard to, to change so yeah cool thank you very much would the jury like to address any questions no we're all good moving I, on to the final team i do have a quick question if you don't mind oh sorry uh, I think you said something about uh, the interface looking like uh, Visual Studio or something. Do you think that was done on purpose or this is something that it just happened? Um, not sure. Um, I mean, they might have used the... I think there is a shell that Visual Studio provides and you can use it. I mean, SQL uh, Server Manager uses that as well. And I think there are a few other tools from Microsoft and uh, from other companies. I think UiPath has something similar or something similar with Office, if I remember correctly. So yeah, it's a way of simplifying your UI maybe when you are designing an application that is targeted to, I don't know, uh, development and such. Great, thank you. Oh, thank you. Let us move on to our last but not least favorite team because it's a very special one and you'll, uh, you'll know uh, when, you, uh, when you see them. Uh, Fast and Furious, Elena and Delia, our woman power team. Take it away, girls. Yeah, thank you, Alex. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Let me just share my screen. Uh, we developed the ticketed system using QuickBase. And um, we started by actually creating the app and moving on to uh, creating its structure. Uh, once. <laughs> Let me just get rid of this <laughs> here. Yeah, if someone knows how to get rid of the of the banner here, <laughs> you have the Zoom banner. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think you can drag and drop it somewhere. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. Sure. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, so we started by actually creating the app and then we went on to the structure and developing the tables using their visual builder, which went on relatively smoothly. So we created the tables with what we needed, different type of fields, date, time, numeric, text. Uh, also, you can link it to users. That was helpful. You have a files uh, table that's already defined in the app. Um, you can easily add the relationships. So uh, the whole uh, structure part and creating the tables um, was fine. <laughs> so it went on uh, all right. Um, moving on, we created the, um, the roles within the applications. For each role, you can set a home uh, default to a home uh, set the default home page, and also by entering the roles, you can actually um, edit the settings for the permissions uh, of the entities of the tables you just created. So here you have the um, the read view, modify, delete, add um, permissions. And then uh, of, uh, for the application, you can go on and create the pages that will show up uh, to each role. So this is what we did. So let's say that the setup, the internal part went on uh, pretty smoothly. What, what was challenging was actually setting up the view for the public and creating that, uh, that flow within the application for registration and according to your role, uh, having different permissions. Uh, what we, we ended up skipping the registration form because from, from what we've seen, you actually need an invite from, uh, you actually need to be added from the admin of the applications. So from, uh, from this first interaction, this seems more of an internal tool rather than one open to the public. Um, oh, what we did uh, do, we, we uh, set up this first uh, home page. We set it up public. You can add the ticket. Um, I'm logged in right now, but if you are not, you cannot see the current ticket manager or current or the ticket support specialist. You can add the files, you can uh, add answers. Uh, a bit heavy on the customizing, customization side. So we had a, a bit of trouble uh, getting familiar with what we can customize or not. <laughs> so that was uh, a bit uh, challenging and time consuming. And um, all in all, uh, um, yeah, I guess <laughs> um, we, uh, we got stuck uh, on setting up the pages for the support specialist and uh, um, the managers. So we, in the time that we had, uh, we managed to build this user interface for adding and uh, cr for creating a ticket and adding an answer. And just for demo purposes, we added the report, a chart actually here. Um, this is one of their features. You can add custom reports depending again on the role you have inside the application. Then I have 30 seconds left. Um, at the first glance, because this was the first interaction with the tool, uh, from our point of view, this seems more of an internal tool. It's very database table oriented. And um, like I said, for UI, it's not very friendly, if you ask me. <laughs> so it's a, for, for example, if you, we wanted to customize the, the homepage, we find it a bit difficult for, you know, just adding templates and CSS and, but then again, it was a first interaction. So and we shall see. Point, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, last team, last jury question. If, uh, if you, uh, if you need to ask a question right now. 
Oh yeah, Chrissy, I can ask one quick, quick one. Sure. sure. What would be the uh, single most uh, uh, interesting thing you learned about uh, about this platform? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's um, probably an answer. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think uh, it it necessarily surprised me. Um, I well, I, well, I honestly don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I think that's an answer. You didn't, you didn't find anything <laughs> very interesting, uh, probably, and that's why you don't have an answer. I thought there were more specialized on, like I said, uh, they're very, uh, everything that has to do with tables and structure. Um, it's a no-code platform, so they're very, every action is oriented to that and makes it very user-friendly. But when you're trying to customize, uh, like we are uh, maybe used to do, it gets tricky. And I think that's, uh, I don't know. That's, that's good for planting up, I guess. Thank you very much. <laughs> good answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. And awesome job. Uh, was really a very high pressure test. But uh, now it's time to turn it to, uh, to the judges. And uh, just before going to results and uh, other, uh, I want to invite all the judges and the few minutes we have left, just to give a few warm impressions on, uh, on what we had here today. I'll uh, stop my share screen and feel free to have an open conversation on this. I can yeah, start. so it was interesting to, oh yeah, sorry, sure. I was going to yeah, say no. somewhere. Yeah, it was interesting to see the different approaches, but uh, yes, that, you know, it's, uh, it's clear that uh, all, all kind of app makers are having a different stance and different approach to, to creating one. And, you know, I guess that for programmers, the most familiar ones are the ones that are kind of coming from the same approach as if you would normally develop an app, which is, you know, this sort of model view controller uh, setup. I guess, but probably uh, there are some others as well. Cool. I think also to, to add a bit of context, uh, uh, this, uh, what we saw today was work that was put uh, in by each team a couple of hours, you know, so it was, uh, uh, it's, it's very, very awesome to see what everybody built in just a few hours, seeing the platform for the first time. So thanks everyone for taking part in this. And uh, some of you might not know, but this uh, initiative was driven by these uh, questions that we get, how do we compare to this platform or that platform? So now we have, we started building this, uh, this uh, knowledge in house. So that's, uh, that's a good uh, outcome of this event. So thanks everyone for doing it. Yeah, I would, uh, I would uh, kind of uh, uh, subscribe to that. Uh, this is Chris. Um, I'm one of those guys asking lots of questions about uh, plant and up and competitors. Uh, and I think this was a great idea to actually get your people kind of deeper into the other spaces, just to kind of get a feel for what, what's happening out there, which is great, I think, as a discovery exercise and a kind of recalibration in the way you see the world. Uh, and great effort by the team. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Uh, um, I think you should ask for a bonus, uh, maybe a Lacanista bonus from Bogdan. Uh, I'm joking, of course. Um, and it was very pleasing to see that you guys managed to put things together very, very quickly, which is, which is impressive, which is the, the mantra of the space, I guess, doing things very fast. Um, and that's the, right, that's the right mindset. Uh, and I like the fact that you kind of try to structure it in, in a way to kind of uh, benefit from the, from the experience uh, in terms of product thinking, which is, which is great. Um, and... Uh, I was uh, surprised to see the, the kind of the wide range of tools and platforms you looked, looked at, which is, which is very cool. Uh, so all in all, uh, a great idea. I, I loved it. I would like to add uh, something. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, about the fact that all the platforms that we've seen today, uh, it seems that they have chosen their target. And that is 
For example, Bubble has chosen to target the small entrepreneurs at the beginning of the road. They do not know any kind of uh, development and they want to do it themselves with their hands. Yeah. Uh, Mendix has targeted developers and this is why uh, it uh, even frames everything like uh, they would be in their own environment. Uh, QuickBase is targeting, uh, let's say, uh, operations managers or um, process managers. Um, what does Plant and App target today? In fact, who, not what? I can take that one. <laughs> yeah. So we are targeting uh, nowadays, we are targeting mostly uh, development teams. Uh, usually led by digital transformation leaders, you know, uh, uh, more innovative people inside the enterprises or in, uh, let's say, consultant profiles or uh, system integrator kind of profiles. And usually the, the outcome, what they build with this is somewhere in between internal tools and external tools. So usually uh, customer portals, I would say it's, it's the, uh, our magic area, you know. Sometimes it's called patient portal if it's healthcare. Sometimes it's called membership uh, association management if it's uh, associations. No, but it's this kind of uh, web applications where uh, users of various roles uh, cooperate with each other. Like. Oh, so I think that uh, we are uh, we are running on uh, on time right now, and uh, I don't know if the results are uh, are ready. Um, Reza, do we announce the results right now, or do we do it post webinar? How do you feel? Uh, well, I think the judges are still finishing up. Um, Judges, when you're when you're judging, you should see a green button that that um, for each criteria. And after you judge it, that button disappears. So once you have no more buttons, you're done. So if you wouldn't mind, do um, take a look at each team and make sure you've judged them all the way. Um, otherwise, I think we might have to announce afterwards. Oh, suspenseful. <laughs> and. Um, Folks, if you want, um, you have the ability to now uh, vote for your uh, favorite. It's under Teams, and there is a button there. It's favorite, and you can vote once or twice tops if you had two favorites. Um, the system will clean up the excess past two. Uh. We will, uh, out of respect for everyone's time, we will uh, announce the, the winners afterwards and we will uh, send out a follow-up on our media, social media channels about who the winner is. Of course, the team will get to find out, but there is uh, some certainty around uh, what has happened today. Uh, everyone that has participated today is a winner. Uh, using Plant and App, being in the local space, I think that's a winning mentality overall. And uh, I think that everyone has something to gain from this, even more than, uh, uh, than a prize for the hackathon. But of course, we also get to follow up for the bragging rights on uh, things. Until then, uh, make sure to uh, uh, fill out our, the feedback form after the webinar. Uh, it really helps a lot. And uh, let's stay tuned uh, on our YouTube channel and on our media channels. And if you don't get to see uh, in the media who the winner is, you will definitely get to see it in the next webinar. And, and don't forget to vote. Right now, uh, Robbie Bubble is in the lead with Alcohol Force One coming up close behind them as the judging comes in. Mm -hmm. And both pretty close on the, it's pretty good spread on the people votes as well. So it's close. So let's, uh, let's keep the big reveal till after the, after the webinar. Bogdan, you want to close us out officially? Yes. Thanks, everyone, for being here. Thanks, judges, for taking the time and uh, helping us uh, 
give an external perspective on our internal initiatives. And uh, for sure, this will be inspiring uh, for uh, the product development, you know, as well as I'm sure our community members. So see you all next week, same day, same hour. Well done, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Bye-bye.